back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we have a great show for you today. First three topics we'll be going over is recapping every single pick from the MLB Draft, giving my thoughts on it and just overall opinions. After that, we'll be going into previewing the Home Run Derby, which does happen tonight. Very excited for that. Then finally, going over Hunter Harvey being traded to the Kansas City Royals. But before we do all that, I'd like to ask you to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers that are sure that your question does get read in the air. Please use the link, gsmcpodcast.net. It really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot. So thank you so much for that. And let's get into the show for today. <clears throat> all right. So first topic we'll be going over is, as I said, the draft picks from the draft that happened yesterday. All of them will be going from uh, the first segment, picks 1 to 10. After that, 11 to 20, then 21 to 30. So let's get into it. So first overall... Cleveland Guardians have the pick, and with the first overall pick in the 2024 MLB Draft, the Cleveland Guardians selected Travis Pizana, second baseman from Oregon State. Now, this was not a surprise to me whatsoever. I don't think it surprised anyone. I did not have him mocked going first overall. I will make that very clear. I got this pick wrong. But going into this draft yesterday, I had a pretty good idea, at least what I thought was going to be the top three. I was wrong, but the top one I got at least right. Going into it, I thought, okay, it was going to be either J.J. Weatherholt from West Virginia or Travis Bazana from Oregon State. Weatherholt would have been the underslot pick, so the Guardians would have been able to save a lot more money down the road. But Bazana is just genuinely the better player, which I think most people would agree on. So the Guardians did end up going with the better player here in Bazana, which I think is the correct decision. I understand that you want to be able to save money, be able to pay some you know higher-level second-round prospects down the line. But at the same time, I think winning the draft lottery going from basically the last pick in it to the top pick is a once in a lifetime opportunity, especially in baseball. So to be able to get that, I think you've got to just not worry about financials for once as a Cleveland team and just take the best player. And that's what they do here in Bazana. Bazana is an incredible, incredible player. Basically does every single thing well on the baseball field. Hits for power, hits for contact, plays a great second base and shortstop, runs the bases incredibly well, is a leader, is a role model. Is a fantastic, fantastic player. I think should be the Guardians starting second baseman or shortstop in the next two to three years. Could be even be sooner. I mean, I know he talked about going up when the Guardians playoff run, making his debut there, but I have to say I think that was a joke. So, yeah, I think I don't really know what else to say about Bazzano other than he's a fantastic, fantastic player. I think every single person had really had really shown that he, you know, really every single person thought that he was either the best or the second best player in the entire draft. So the fact that he did go number one overall to the Guardians is a good thing and. Guardians made the right pick, in my opinion. Great job. So, next, second overall uh, in the 2024 MLB Draft, we had the Cincinnati Reds selecting Chase Burns, right-handed pitcher from Wake Forest. Now, this, to me, was a shocker. I had expected all along for it to be Charlie Condon out of Georgia to go second overall to the Reds. That's who I heard them connected to. That's who I thought made the most sense. And not that Chase Burns isn't a really good player. I mean, I expected him to go three, so I've obviously got number two and three wrong. I got them switched, I should say. But... Yeah, Burns a fantastic player. I just really do not expect him to go number two. So, looking at Burns, I mean, he's a fantastic, fantastic prospect. There's a reason he went number two overall. Has an incredible fastball. Has an incredible slider. Has just insane stuff for a guy. I mean, he can throw 100 and 102 if he really wants to. So, he's an absolutely incredible starting pitcher prospect. I think could be up really next year as a real part of that rotation. And looking at the future of this Reds rotation now, you have guys like Rhett Lauder, who's his, who his team in college, actually. You have, of course, Hunter Green, who just made the all-star team. Nick Lodolo, that's a great top four for your future. That's fantastic. And I think when you're looking at this Reds team, they have an incredible hitting core. And being able to get now a true elite pitching prospect, a guy who should probably slot into one of the top 20 to 25 prospects in all of baseball now, just a fantastic, fantastic pick. And yeah, great job by the Reds. I was surprised. I would have gone with Condon, to be perfectly honest, but I get why they went with Burns. And yeah, the pro- the thing with Burns we have to watch out for is he has a great fastball, he has a great slider, but what else does he have? I think really for him to be as successful as he needs to be in the major league level, he needs to develop a third pitch. And believe me, he's going to have all the time in the world to do that. The Reds are going to take their time with him. But, and you know, they have, I'm sure, great developmental coaches. He's their MLB organization. So he does need to develop a third pitch. I think that's pretty clear. His fastball and slider are absolutely elite, nasty, but I think he needs to develop that third pitch to be able to be a real great starting pitcher in this league, which I think he can be. So next, third overall pick, we have the Colorado Rockies selecting Charlie Condon, outfielder from Georgia. The fact that the Rockies were able to get Condon here at the border number three is absolutely fantastic. Condon has light tower power, I believe led all of NCAA baseball in home runs. 
was just an absolute monster this year for Georgia. Really came out of nowhere and was slugging his way through all of college. And yeah, just an absolutely fantastic, fantastic player. Um, has had an incredible, incredible season. I'm just realizing right now I did not update the title to this on YouTube. Probably if you're watching live, I apologize if you're confused. But keep, I'm going to keep going here. Um, with Condon, this guy has just insane, insane power. Has an incredible, compact right-handed swing that I think really is absolutely fantastic. The fact that he's going to be able to play in Coors Field for 82 of his games, 81 of his games, is just unfair. I mean, really, I don't know how the league let this happen. But the fact that he was available for three here at the board... For the Rockies, it's just a great, great job by them to be able to do that, and I'm sure they were ecstatic to be able to get him. Again, I really think he could end up being a 40-50 to 50 home run bat in Coors Field. The fact, again, I just think really it's unfair to be able to get this kind of power in Coors. A guy who can be up probably by the end of next year, maybe even the start of this year, next, end of this year if you really wanted him to be, a franchise-changing talent that I think is absolutely fantastic. And yeah, what a great, great pick by the Rockies here. You had to take him if he was available at three and just... A really, really great job. And, yeah, um, just an incredible, incredible pick here by the Rockies. I think he works so well within this organization. And, yeah, this Rockies, for, this Rockies future is looking really nice. They have some really nice pieces, and Condon, I think, is going to add to that. So a fantastic, fantastic pick here. And props to them for being able to get him and you know recognize the talent that was here on the board and available to them. So, yeah. Uh, we are going to go to the fourth pick here. I'm just trying to update the title as I forgot to. Um, hopefully this is going to be working. Um, okay, so going into our fourth pick here now, we have fourth overall. We have the Oakland Athletics selecting Nick Kurtz, first baseman from Wake Forest. Now, this was one of the real big surprises of the draft. I really did not have Nick Kurtz going anywhere in, near the top four. And the fact that the A's picked him really did catch me off the guard. Now, I do like Nick Kurtz a lot. I've compared him to Mark Deschera a lot in this as an athletic first baseman who has a lot of power, but also, also can field the position very well, which I still think is true. But as much as I like Kurtz, I would not have taken him here at number four. I understand maybe you wanted to save money under slot, which is fine. I just think um, the available talent here at number four was pretty great. And to be able to pass up on guys like a Jack Caglione, or a J.J. Weatherholt, or a Hagen Smith, I just don't think makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I think that overall this is a really good pick. It is. He's a very good player. There's a reason he went top four. There's a reason he's been in these conversations. But most picks were him going maybe 7 to 10, not really in the top four. So as much as I like the pick, I think is a really great power hitting first baseman, going to be someone that can really carry the franchise over to Vegas. I just don't think that it's the best pick you could have made. I just think passing up Guys like Jack Heglion for this doesn't really make sense. So I think Heglion is a much better player. But if you want to go under slot, this is a good pick, I guess. But still, if I'm just going purely off best pick, I, would, I don't really agree with this. Next, we have the Chicago White Sox selecting fifth overall in the 2024 MLB draft. Hagen Smith, left-handed pitcher from Arkansas. This is also a little bit of a what moment for me. Um, I think Hagen Smith's a really good prospect. I do. I think this is a guy who is a very crafty left-handed starting pitcher, has some good stuff. He's going to be a plus and will be pitcher in the future. Probably be up rather soon for this White Sox team. We'll probably take the Chris Sale, Garrett Crochet route with him, make him a reliever for his first two years or so, then ease him into being a starting pitcher, which I think is cool. But Hagen Smith has already had Tommy John in his career. He's not the greatest starting pitcher on the board. And I just think, again, passing up talent like J.J. Weatherholt like Jack Caglion, for him is just kind of weird. I, I get it. He's a good player. I want to get that right. But it just, I think there are better players on the board. And I think the injury risk is something you have to deal with. So next, sixth overall, we have the Kansas City Royals selecting Jack Caglion, first baseman, left-handed pitcher from Florida. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic pick. I talked about him. I thought he should have really probably gone number four. And the fact that he was still available at number six here for this Kansas City Royals team is absolutely fantastic. If him and Bobby Witt Jr. are the next dynamic duo in all of baseball, I really would not be surprised. This guy is so, so good. He has light tower power as a left-handed hitter. Can really hit 40 to 50 home runs every year. I would not be surprised. I don't think he's going to be a pitcher at the next major league level. But, you know, if the if worse comes to worse and he flames out as a hitter, you still have him being a pitcher in your back pocket. So you get that as well if the Royals team. But you're not focusing on that whatsoever. You're getting a franchise first baseman who can come up probably next year, in the middle of next year, I'd say, can be an immense power bat that can slot right into the middle of that lineup. Again, him and Bobby Witt, I think, can really turn around this Royals franchise and 
really be the two stars of this team for a long, long time. So an absolutely fantastic pick. He has name power as well. Um, you know, I think if Elgo, if worse comes to worse, he can be Texas Rangers Joe, uh, Joey Gallo, which is just home runner strikeouts. He does need to cut down on those strikeouts to be a successful bat, but at the same time still has a ton of talent and is a very, very good player. So number six, I think this is one of the steals of the draft. I don't know how he's still available here, but fantastic, fantastic pick. Seventh overall, we have the St. Louis Cardinals selecting J.J. Weatherholt, shortstop second baseman from West Virginia. What a fantastic pick by this by this Cardinals team. J.J. Weatherholt was the guy I had going first overall to the Guardians for two straight mocks, and the fact that you're able to get him at number seven is fantastic. Now, it's not like he was the best talent in the draft. He just was, go was maybe going first overall because of the bonus pool stuff, but still, I would say a definite top five talent in this draft is absolutely fantastic will create a electric middle uh, middle infield duo with him and Mason Mason Wynn for years to come. Is a fantastic, fantastic hitting player. I heard a comparison on the ESPN coverage I was watching last night for the draft, and they said he's not he's not elite at anything, but he's very good at everything. And I thought that was so true. This is a guy that is going to hit twenty to twenty five home runs, hit around two ninety, have a triple slash of, you know, probably in real PS, probably around eight fifty. He's going to play great defense. He's going to steal 30, 40 bases. It's just an incredible, incredible talent to be able to get here at number seven. And a great pick by this Cardinals team. Fantastic, fantastic job. Eighth overall, we have the Los Angeles Angels selecting Christian Moore, third baseman from Tennessee. Really good pick. I really like the power hitting potential you have in Christian Moore here. You can add another piece to your young hitting court. Add in with guys like Nolan Chenewell, Zach Neto, Logan O'Hoppe. You can add in this guy who I think should be up relatively soon. Again, he's a college bat. All these college bats can be up pretty soon. So... Yeah, I like this pick a lot by the Angels. Please don't rush him up like you have your other few prospects. He's really, really good, and I think it was a great pick by the Angels to be able to get this guy, Christian Moore. Fantastic, fantastic pick. Yeah, no doubts here. Ninth overall, we have the first high school player going off the board with the Pittsburgh Pirates selecting Connor Griffin, shortstop slash outfielder, Pittsburgh. Connor Griffin has to figure out what position he is first. He also has pitching in his back pocket as well. A lot of, a lot of two-way players in this draft. I mean, wow, Tommy's under number on this league. But... Yeah, Connor Griffin, not much to say because he's a high school bat. Has a lot of raw talent, has a lot of raw strength. Um, is an incredible, incredible athlete. I think the Pirates are really playing the long game with this guy. Will probably be up in four to five, maybe even six years. But um, still is a fantastic, fantastic prospect. And I think the Pirates really knocked it out of the, um, out of the board at this one. I, if I was them, I might have taken a more MLB-ready prospect, maybe like a James Tibbs or a Braden Montgomery. But I get it. You're playing the long game here. But I, I think you kind of need some MLB bats. But, again, you don't draft for – now you draft for just the best player you see. And if Degano Griffin was their best player, I don't see any doubts with that. A fantastic, fantastic pick here and has a lot of potential. And finally, number 10 here, we have the Washington Nationals selecting Seaver King from Wake Forest. King is a really nice contact-hitting second baseman shortstop. Can really play all over the infield as well should say contact hitting just really good hitter as well he's been care compared a lot to Mookie Betts and of course I don't really think he's going to be as good as Mookie it's hard to be but still is a fantastic fantastic player and has a ton of potential I do think it is funny that a guy named Seaver will be in the same division as the Mets but yeah I think this is a really good pick for this national team can be up rather quickly and add into this amazing young hitting court they're building there with CJ Abrams James Wood Dylan Cruz Robert Hassel so yeah, I think Seaver King was a really good pick by this Nationals team. He's a very good infielder, and again, should be up rather quickly and add in. So yeah, that is our first segment here, talking about picks 1 to 10 in this MLB draft. Moving into our second segment, we'll be talking about uh, the picks 11 to 20 for the MLB draft, so going over that. So yeah, we'll be doing that, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, and bye. Bye.